Welcome back to my talks on From Art to Science in Search of Reality. I am Marcella Costa from Flinders University. I cover up until now in three parts, beginning from Kai painting to the Roman realism, then the decadence of the Roman realism during Christianity to Renaissance, then the geometry giving rise to modern physics, and now I'm going to deal with the geometry of nature, non-Euclidean geometry and fractals. Let's see how we go. In the 1800s, non-Euclidean geometries developed with Gauss, Bolyai, Riemann, Lobachevsky, Beltrame, Minkowski, the geometry that gave all the ideas about geometry of the universe to Einstein. So there was a big revolution in the mathematics, particularly in geometry. What do we see beyond the Euclidean geometry, which applies to planes in 2Ds flat? But if you have this time, not just a null curvature where the ordinary Euclidean planar geometry applies, we go to two extremes with a positive curvature, like a ball, like the Earth, a spherical geometry, whereby you can have a triangle with the inner angles adding to more than 180 degrees, and where two lines in parallel may eventually join before infinity. So you can tell the triangle drawn on the Earth with the, uh, with the flat part in the equator and two meridian at at uh, 90 degrees, can have 90 degrees joining up at the pole, and the addition of 3 times 90 is brighter than 180. And the two meridian, which are parallel at the level of the equator, join at the, at the pole. So you can see that the laws of geometry are very different in a spherical geometry. On the other hand, you have actually a hyperbolic geometry, like a saddle, where opposite, the inner angle of a triangle may be less than 180 degrees, and where even parallel line may eventually diverge. And this really represents a way of looking at geometry applied eventually to the universe. Einstein used Riemann's hyperbolic geometry for his theory of relativity of space-time continuum <coughs> at its relation to gravity. Space itself is curved by gravity in a negative shape in the fourth dimension. This is what will look like in a geometrical way. The various microscopic domain may show very different geometry. At the level of our world, we apply this geometry, planar or hyperbolic or, or, or spherical. If you go into small one, we begin to see little twiggles where no longer the space may be simple flat. If we go even deeper than that, we may begin to see the appearance of matter from, from nowhere in the way which has been uh, if like imagined by, by the physicists in recent years. So the topology may be very different. If you have actually a level one, cosmic topology may be very different with the curvature of the, of the space. It may have actually a weak curvature, or strong curvature, depending on, on, on the relativity of Einstein. We can have indeed the classic mechanics or a strict relativity, where we have actually everything work on a flat plane, or we can have really a, a quantum level or quantum gravitation, where we have this little fluctuation of the curvature and topology at the very ultra microscopic level. So space-time geometry has different levels with different properties at different scales. So we can no longer apply one single geometry to the entire extent of the universe. We can imagine a topology like a donut, which is really similar to a cup, <coughs> if, if actually is equivalent, or a sphere might be equivalent to a bowl. So in a way, uh, the topology of the modern universe is still in the very making. Geometrically, 
we can already imagine a universe which is beyond the paradox. It's unlimited but finite universe. Some painting on Escher, circular limit in 1959, you can see that become smaller, 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 it never ends, is unlimited but within a finite picture. Poincaré thought of this representation of the universe already at the end of the 1800s, just before Einstein. <coughs> so, the process of geometrization of space went through, summarizing again, that space became pictorial with the Renaissance, painting became linear geometry with the Renaissance, space became geomet geometry with Galileo Galilei, geometry space became mathematics with Descartes, Geometry of space extends to dynamics with Newton, and non Euclidean geometries are applied to the universe. Now, the next question is what is the geometry of the natural world around us? We come to the very simple origin of geometry the dimensions, one a line, two a, a surface, and three dimensions of a volume. And in a way, these are different powers to the one, to the two, to the third of the same linear dynamics of uh, linear geometry of uh, Euclid. The problem arises when people try to imagine how to map the outline of an island. <coughs> the outlines of most natural structures are jagged and do not conform with the simple geometrical figures with integer dimensions. This came about in trying to establish how long, for instance, is the Great Britain coastland. You can join the various points along the a map. Uh, the points are, are fairly gross. You can see a, a fairly simple geometrical shape with a number of points. But if you increase the number of uh, points where you actually you transcribe into a map, then the scale is every step little is only 14 kilometers apart become more jagged. If you make it even larger, only per hundred meters between the different points, it become a more, if, if you like, a realistic map of England. So the coastline can be conceived as a curve, which as we increase its accuracy, it became longer and more jagged, winding through space differently from an orderly line, although it's still topologically one-dimensional. But since the coastline fills more space than an ordinary line, the dimension is greater than one, than a line, but it's still less than two, an area. So this dimension becomes what has been called fractal, a fraction between one and two. The value of this power is called the fractal dimension of the geometry, geometric object to distinguish it from the conventional integer dimension of a line, one, or uh, an area, two. This was really a thought of Mandelbrot, who first used the term fractal in his book back in 1975, written in French, Les objets fractals, form, hazard, and dimension, and subsequently in the fractal geometry of nature in 1983. He was a giant, a genius. Well, fractals are infinitely complex pattern that are self-similar across different scales. They are created by repeating a simple process over and over in an ongoing repeated loop. A triangle, you can add then on the triangle another triangle, then on every side of the triangle another little triangle, and so on. So you can see become, is called the Koch triangle, a paradoxical image of a figure which is a triangle that however, is self-similar across levels and become increasingly jagged, increasingly complex, and goes from a simple surface of dimension of two to almost a dimension of three, but not quite, so a fractal. <coughs> the best known fractal shape is the Mandelbrot infinite set, generated by mapping, plotting in space, the behavior of a recursive process of a simple equation z on n plus 1 is equal what was uh, the value of z the time just before, n plus 1 at time n, square plus a, a 
a variable. This picture are well known to you, possibly. You can see a picture of a fractal. And I can, I'm going to show you now the appearance of this incredible fractal by increasing the power you go to infinity. Become and repeat itself a different uh, magnification. You can see the enormous richness of this wonderful geometrical structure of the, the Mandelbrot infinite set. And as I said, it goes forever. You can look for it in any, in any possible website. It's just an amazing mathematical formulation of a modern geometry of fractals. The same. So the growth of many natural structures can be simulated by iteration, repeated processes, by repeating simple process over and over in an ongoing feedback loop resulting in regular fractal structure. I mentioned to you the Koch triangle by adding triangle on every side of the original triangle. Of course, natural structure like snowflakes are a good example of fractal which are really made in very similar process underlying molecular mechanism which are similar every time but different in every single snowflake and yet they maintain the same fractal structure. Other, other physical phenomena like a diffuse limited aggregation or viscous fingering, what is called the Sutton Taylor instability, show the ability of the system to grow in this very chaotic way according to indeed the rules of the fractals, self-similar at different magnifications. River system on Earth show a fractal structure, which uh, divide and divide again, divide again in a very similar way at different magnifications. Mountains, ranges like the Himalayas or the Alps, show a fractal structure. Quite amazing. So a lot of geography is organized in a fractal way. Even the development of living structure, like picture of taken here near where I live, the growth plants by simple diversifying by doubling, doubling again, doubling again, doubling again, and becomes indeed a complex plant. This applies to ferns, for instance, which grow up in very much in the same way. So many of the plants are the, due to generation of uh, repeated iteration processes resulting in regular fractal structures. Not all the natural structures are regular, but they're still mostly fractal. An example of a regular structure started from 0, 1, you can add two numbers, and the sequence you get by adding the two numbers next to each other, you get the famous Fibonacci series. That's practically a thousand years old. And this series describes well the generational pattern, such as the logarithmic spiral pattern in some shells. A wonderful expression of the fractals in nature. Another good example is the cabbage, the Romanesco cabbage, that looks very much like, by the way, the human brain. People have made some analogies with it. And the, the fractal dimension is supposed to be more than, uh, than a surface, which would be two, but less than a volume, which would be three. The fractal dimension is 2.8. So this is a way of describing the complexity of uh, nature around us according to this modern geometry. Leonardo da Vinci already recognized geometrical principle behind the growth processes of complex systems like a tree. He saw already the tree being generated by dual process, just like the fractals are. So he, again, was ahead of his times, again, not surprisingly. Of course, in modern time, the computer simulation of, uh, by making fractal allow to simulate just about every and any uh, aspect of uh, nature. And most of the movies you see these days made by computer use indeed the fractal geometry. Well, I come to the end of this uh, talk, or part four, the geometry of nature, where I show you in the previous talks, space became pictorial in the Renaissance, painting became linear geometry with the Renaissance, space became geometric with Galileo Galilei, geometric space became mathematic with Descartes, geometry of space extends to the dynamics with Newton, 
the non-Euclidean geometry for space and time applied in 1800, and the geometry of nature applies to the, all the things around us, the fractal geometry for all natural structures. In a way, this will allow me now to go on to investigate the relation between ge geometry and dynamics. I'll see you next time. Cheer up!